this week on my YouTube channel, I would like to introduce you all to author Lori Hines. She is also a psychic medium. She is amazing. She wrote this book, The Ancient Ones. Oh, can you see it? Okay, here we go. That's a little bit clearer. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Looks a little fuzzy, but I, I don't know if that's. I guess it's my filter. I, it but might it, just be on my end. Um, it's probably my filter. So, but I'll link it down below uh, to the Amazon store with the book. Now, I've read the first 80 pages last night in one sitting. It's amazing. I love this book. It's everything I wanted a book to be. It's fiction. Um, it's about a psychic medium intuitive who investigates um, mysteries with the FBI. And it's so good and it deals with Native American mythology and this book is done right. I just read a book that was um, based in a mining town. It was called um, To Break a Covenant and the author really was not sure what she was doing. She didn't go all in like Lori did. This book starts off running. There is no filler. It is amazing. I love this book. So Lori, um, your protagonist is Lorelai Lanier. How much is she based on you and your life? Um, quite a bit, actually. And what's kind of ironic is that when I first started writing The Ancient Ones, I didn't feel like I had these abilities. Um, I did, but they were kind of dormant, so to speak, from what my spirit guides have been telling me. And the more I started writing, when I started getting into the second book in the series, which is Caves of the Watchers, um, and there's three in the series, but when I was about halfway through that book is when I felt like I started to pick up the psychic medium abilities, and those talents started coming out. So when I was writing, I really didn't feel like I was that much in tune with Lorelei. And then the more I started writing and the more creative abilities that started coming out, um, then the more those abilities started coming out. So in the medium abilities, I was more of a psychic initially, and then the medium abilities started kind of attaching to that. And so when I always, when I do my spiritual workshops, I always tell people being creative, whether you're creative or not, but being creative can really help build on that. At least it has for me. Um, the more I started writing, um, the more I opened to my creativity and to the talents, then the more my psychic medium abilities started to grow. So that's what people don't realize that having those that creative side can actually help um, the other side as well, the intuitive abilities. It helps you tap in. Definitely. So I also, I want to back up. I met Lorelai at her book signing event at Vulture City. Um, she was amazing. We had a great conversation. And as you all know, I love Vulture City. It has really sparked my interest in ghost towns um, and mining towns in particular. They seem to have very interesting pasts and history that I'm just intrigued by. Um, so I, she signed this book and I, she does book signings. You do it like what, once a month, Lori at Vulture City? Yeah, I've been trying to get out to Vulture City once a month. Yeah. So I will po be posting on my Instagram when she's back up. I'm definitely going to go back again. And I know someone who would love another, an autographed copy of this book who, um, would really love this book. So I'm excited to get her a copy. <laughs> oh, that's great. No, yeah, absolutely. I'll be out there in January again. Okay, perfect. Do you know the date yet? Um, I need to set a date, probably um, maybe the second weekend or third weekend of January. Okay. I just need to let them know. Um, I'm trying to, I might get out there the same day as Lottie's horses. Um, everyone needs to know that they actually have, they're starting to get Clydesdale horses and different kinds of horses out there and they you have carriage you can get carriage rides and stuff like that so they're kind of in the process of trying to work that through so I'm trying to schedule my signings at the same time that they have the horse rides and stuff yeah the horses were there when I was there um and they're just so beautiful yeah it really adds to the atmosphere of Vulture City that's for sure <laughs> it really does Vulture City is just it's so cool so that actually um leads me into my next question. This book was published in 2016 and it takes place in the essay office at Vulture City. Um, 
it wasn't renovated in 2016 or before, was it? It wasn't renovated until 2017? Um, yeah, I think it's been about the past four or five years. I think it was right. Yeah, the last time, um, it's been about five or six years, I think, since they started renovating, and that's a continuous process. Uh, but most of the buildings, um, I think they've got like five or six that have been completely renovated, and they're doing more now. Um, but yeah, it was the atmosphere is still kind of the same, but at night, <clears throat> the investigation in the book starts out at night, and it's a whole different feel there at night than it is during the day. Uh, nothing really evil out there. There's a lot of very positive earthbound ghosts and spirits as well that are watching over the place, and they really love what's being done out there, actually. Because yeah. it's, bringing their, it's bringing their world back to life when you think about it. Tina was saying she thought they were definitely happier now than before it yeah. started being renovated. Yeah, and I had a friend who's an investigator who said just the opposite. I said, well, no, I've been hearing that they, a lot of them, some of them might not be maybe because they feel like there's more people coming into their world and maybe they enjoyed the tranquility before a lot of visitors started coming in. But I think the majority do like it and they do seem to be welcoming the visitors because people like you really appreciate that kind of atmosphere. So, yes, I think it's, it's just so cool. Um, so uh, on the discovery channel, they had some shamans there and they talked about how there were these ancient like monsters that were placed under the ground there and that um, they were released when um, the mining started and that these beasts are now roaming around and that that's why there's so many earthbound spirits that they're afraid to like leave the buildings. Do you think that's true? I've never even heard that before. I don't know if that came. There's a, a group of, they're actually quite fascinating, a Native American group of investigators who come out there. They actually lead tours out there and they're really interesting guys. And I don't know if that came from them. They're unearthing the supernatural and they've been picking up stuff. Now, I don't know if that was one of the things or if it came from somebody else that was out there. But my guides, are they've never said anything like that. Um, they just help connect me with the earthbound ghosts or the spirits that are there. <clears throat> and I've got, I'll be working with paranormal investigators out there um, to like kind of verify what they're finding out scientifically, just verifying what I'm picking up versus what they're picking up. But um, no, I that's an interesting question and I've never heard that. You can have 20 different mediums go out there and they're gonna pick up on different things and they're gonna connect with different ghosts or different spirits because as you know, being an energy worker, it, it comes down to energy. So one spirit might connect more with me versus another one that's going to connect with another medium. So it's, it's amazing how different and what we can each pick up on. But no, I've never even heard of that. Okay. So speaking of um, paranormal investigators, have you ever worked with the police or the FBI yourself doing investigations? Um, no, but I'd love to. That's one thing I've been kind of putting out there to the universe is that that would be something that's kind of interesting to do, um, just because I'm usually pretty good at picking. I don't have to be in front of somebody to pick things up. I think most of us, we can do phone readings and we can get messages pretty clearly without having to be face to face. Um, but now I've, um, my, my uh, spirit guides are actually, I consider them like a family, like mm -hmm. you know, closer than, you know, blood because I have been close to them in past lives. Most of my spirit guides are Native American, which is why all of my books kind of touch on that, that aspect as far as the culture and history. Now, did you grow up in Phoenix? Oh, no, I'm actually from Florida originally, but I've been here from Florida probably, oh my gosh, like 20, 30 years ago. I moved out of Florida about, I think, over 30 years ago. Oh, wow. Um, when, I, when I got married and then I, I've been divorced, that's been a long time ago. But um, now Arizona is kind of my home now. I love it here. I love up north and Vulture City. They're like a family to me. Um, I go out there all the time and I know everyone out there pretty well. So including the spirits. <laughs> yeah, so it's a that's fun place awesome. to go. It really is. Now, I've noticed um, when I first moved out here about 10 years ago and I was going to Jerome, there was a it wasn't as touristy i mean it was still kind of touristy but there was a lot of spiritual activity a lot of um hauntings a lot of things you could catch and see with your you know eyes not just spiritually but and now that you go it's packed it's always it's 
there's so many people there and I feel that the activity has really kind of stopped. Do you think that, how do you think that people affect that? It seems like ghosts really do like ghost towns where there's not a lot of people. Do you have any thoughts Um, on that? Yeah, and it can be different based on different, even Jerome has its own energy compared to Vulture City, as you know, you've you've probably been around a lot of places in Arizona. So um, I think when it's that packed, like you said, especially on the weekends, that's when most people go or holidays. Yeah, I mean, my guides are back here saying, yeah, people, the the spirits or earth and ghosts are going to retreat if that happens, and they might kind of move more back into their own own dimension versus maybe showing themselves to certain people it's just I'm kind of getting a visual of them all moving back because away from the center of town where all of the visitors are yeah that's um they know it is kind of a peaceful place some might step more forward some like that audience yeah (laughs) so it depends on the spirits it depends on the town so it's everything is so different everything is based on energy some I'm sure there are some spirits who will still show themselves because I do hear stories about Jerome and I think like the haunted hamburger um I've heard stories about that place in Jerome so and then there's the hospital up on the hill (laughs) so it's hard to say it really is but um and generally I think if if a place is that packed you're just not going to hear as many stories I haven't I know a lot of people who have been there and I just, I don't hear a lot of ghost stories, but that doesn't mean if you don't bring a um, paranormal investigators back at night that they'll have experiences. Cause I know that hospital has kind of um, a lot of groups of investigators going up there and they have experiences. So. Yeah. I'm sure that um, once the lights go down, the sun goes down and the lights turn off. I know that all the um, shops close up quick at six and they run yeah. If you stayed there at night, I'm sure a lot would happen. I kind of want to do that. I think it would be kind of fun. <laughs> it is vastly, it's vastly different. And I think that's to a certain extent the case at Vulture City as well. But yeah, Jerome's a pretty cool town though. So um, how did you discover Vulture City? Oh my gosh. You know, I think um, it was like 15, 20 years ago. I think I went there with a group of paranormal investigators and it was actually a day trip. And um, I recently got in touch with one of the investigators from when we were in that group. I think she still has that same group. And um, so we went out there on a day trip. There's maybe 10 of us, I think, and just kind of wandered the town and stuff. Um, There were totally different owners at the time, and it wasn't renovated like it was now. So the dining hall and the cookhouse, it was the front part of that was completely collapsed. Um, the SA office was really dangerous to go into. Uh, so it's, it's amazing how different the atmosphere is now just because of how it's been renovated. Um, but yeah, it was on a day trip about I'm not, maybe 15 years ago, I think, 15, 20. That was a oh. fun trip. Um, and then I think I went back with, um, to do an actual investigation as well. I think I had done like two or three actual investigations with other groups of investigators. And then I would go out on my own and just kind of explore during the daytime. Um, and I had one experience there by the swing set. And I don't know, you wouldn't have been able to, if that was your first time out when I met you last month, but the the Bureau of Land Management um, on their property, they actually have an old schoolhouse, the original schoolhouse that was there. And it's pretty much, it's really dilapidated. And I think they're just going to be tearing it down. Oh. And when I was doing a, um, there's a set of swing sets right next to it. And when I was doing an EVP session during the day, early evening, I said, oh, if there's any, I sat on one of the swing sets and I said, if, is, if there is anybody here, any children playing nearby, can you let me know you're here? And I didn't hear anything at the time. And when I got home and played my recorder back, I heard, a, it sounded like a little boy's laughter. It was giggling like hee 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 like that. It was kind of cute. It wasn't frightening, but it sounded like, I don't know if it was a girl or a boy. Aww. And so that, that's really cool when you get that kind of evidence. And I yeah. think that's, that's probably the first time I've had that really happen. Um, sometimes I can hear things. It's usually my, my visions as a psychic medium are more internal, like through my third eye. Sometimes I do see things, um, in front of me as well. But, uh, so I think for investigators, as you know, most of us, that's what we're looking for is that ultimate proof. Um, and to hear something like that, that clearly, that's pretty cool to know that something wants to connect with you. So. Definitely. Um, so how long did it take you to write the ancient ones? Uh, <clears throat> that one was about four years. 
four or five years before um, I started writing to when it was published. The other books were about a year, um, <clears throat> a year, year and a half between being published. The Ancient Ones, Caves of the Watchers, I think was a year, year and a half later. And then The Whispers Among the Ruins is the third in the series. And I think that was about a year later as well. Now, it's really cool. You just released a new book. What is the title of your new book? That's the fourth, and it's not part of the series. That's called Visions of Time. And for anybody that's into the metaphysical, anybody that considers themselves spiritual or wanting to delve into that, um, she's also a psychic investigator. And this is actually... Yeah, you know, that's, I think, my favorite book out of all four. The latest one usually is, but she's a crystal, kind of a crystal seer. And it takes you from, she lives in um, Sedona, Oak Creek Canyon area of Arizona. And then it takes you into Peru as well, into the pre-Columbian ancient native ruins up there. So if you're in the native history, it's got a lot of different fun aspects about it. And they're all um, murder mysteries. And they're very fun to read. They're very, for what some people say, quick reads. Um, I agree. So learn, yeah, so that you can learn about, a lot about Native culture through them. I, I do research. I don't just write fiction to write fiction. I do it because I want people to know a lot of factual elements about Southwest history, Native American history, Arizona history. So for me, it's not just about writing. It's about educating people. And that really comes through. And I really appreciate that. Um, because like I said, I was reading this young adult book that I was wishing and hoping that it had the history of uh you know native american culture it it hinted at it but the author was afraid to even mention the word skinwalker or you know supernatural um characters from the native american um belief system and it it was it was just very disappointing and your book just goes all in and it's i think it's done in a very um like you said educational way but it's fun like this book is a quick read and I, I can't wait to finish it. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. It's good to hear that from somebody who's, who's an avid reader. That's nice because some people don't appreciate it. They, they might not have that spiritual mindset and some people don't understand it. So I'm like, well, I, I didn't think there's a whole lot to understand. <laughs> right. No, there, there um, isn't. <laughs> and, and it's, it's fun. And what's, you know, when I started writing these books, I thought, okay, well, this is all fiction. But the idea of um, interdimensional realms and portals and all of that is actually science is proving that stuff now. So the more I write, it's like this isn't as much fiction as, I, as it used to be. It's people are finding out that these things are true. Yeah. Um, so that's what makes it interesting. I just read your article on your WordPress account about like the vortexes and the um, uh, I guess you did a show. So you said that you did. Did you do radio or a podcast show? Yeah, there's a, um, it's called Paranormal 411, and they changed their name from Project Dark Corona, and those two, um, David and Jason, are really fantastic hosts, and they they really make you feel comfortable during the interview. It's usually a two-hour interview, especially if it's on the weekends, and so I've done like three or four shows with them, and I usually end up doing readings as well. Some people have questions about their past lives and things like that, so I'll do readings for them. I do spirit guide readings, animal readings. I can usually tell people what their animal guides are at the time. And what people don't realize is we have different spirit guides and animal guides that are going to step forward at different times in our lives um, that represent different things. And Absolutely. so, yeah. And so people love the animal readings. You know, what, what are my animals? And I'll, if I pick up on one, usually I pick up on two or three, I'll get visuals of two or three different ones. Whether it's an eagle, a hawk, sometimes lion, a seal, it's just polar bear. It's really interesting what you get for different people. Yeah. So are you a trained hypnotherapist since you do past life regression or do you come at it from a shamanic view? Oh, actually, I don't. Well, I don't do past life regression. I was thinking about that at one point in my spirit guides. I'm like, no, you're not. We don't necessarily want you into that aspect of it. You're going to be kind of work, getting you in a different path, a writer versus a psychic medium. And I think part of it is getting in with paranormal investigators and working with them to um, validate their evidence. And I'm hoping eventually as a psychic investigator um, to work with police departments, but that can take a while. Um, I think most police departments are more open to it than they used to be, but not like not everyone is. And I'm not sure how the city of Phoenix is or Arizona, but um, 
it's, as I, I'm, I'm not a hypnotherapist. I know you are. And that's, I know other people who are too. And that's an interesting profession, especially like yourself and you tie, you, you're a Reiki healer as well. And I've studied Reiki and gotten certificates in that. And so to be able to combine this is actually pretty interesting from your perspective. But yeah, I'm it's therapist though, but that's one thing I've been thinking about doing. Yeah, I think that's cool. I mean, past life regression is so fascinating. So you just do past life readings from a psychic perspective. And sometimes it can kind of, my guides are psych, sometimes Lori, that can actually act as a regression because it gets people to study up on, you know, like if I tell somebody, okay, well, I see you being an indigenous um, past life person from Alaska or you were Cherokee at one time or whatever I pick up on, it actually gets them to study about that. And most of the time they tell me, yeah, I've been studying about that culture and I feel drawn to that culture. So they already come into this life. It seems like they realize they've had a past life and it's just when you connect them with that and validate that with them, then that usually helps them on the path and it gets them connected with their spirit guides more. So it can actually act as a regression at times. That's cool. That's really cool. Oh, oh yeah. Um, so, you know, we kind of talked about how the ghosts or, you know, the spirits at Vulture City seem happier now. Do you think that it's less haunted now? Do you think some spirits have crossed over? Um, it's possible. Um, I think it might be. My guides behind me are saying, no, it's actually, <laughs> it's busier. Oh. <laughs> so, I don't know more coming in just because of the renovations. Um, I think that's part of it. I think that's what I was picking up. Before, when I first started coming back to Vulture City, the first time that I saw it really renovated. So I actually can draw more earthbound ghosts or what we call spirits who've actually transcended because there's a combination of both out there. And no, it's, you know, it, it's not all positive too. There can be bad things out there as well. Um, there was a Chinese, um, I forget his name, but I read about him in one of the history books that they sell out there. And he was a Chinese miner and he actually killed a few people out there. Um, so a lot of people think it was just the, you know, cowboys and Indians fighting and it's another set, you know, there's much more to it than that out there. It's not, that's not the whole history. There's a lot of people that really suffered and there's kids, there's a cemetery right next to Vulture City where a lot of kids were, it's mostly children out there, um, who suffered and passed away from illness and stuff. So it's, there's a lot of history that, you know, I've seen kids out there and I've, I've had kids visit me at night from out there and make connections with me and, not necessarily that, that they follow me home, but they might be looking for help and I'll hear them talking to me or I'll see them. And so um, I have a really deep connection because I've had a past life there. And that's how a lot of people are drawn out there is they have had past lives, whether it's as a minor or a settler, um, they come out there because they feel that connection. Um, so do you think there's a reason why mining towns are more haunted than maybe other spaces do you think it's because the job was so dangerous or do you think it's because they're you're literally digging up dirt where you know people are usually buried or do you do you think that it just because like we said they're usually quieter they're usually ghost towns now or do you think it's a combination of everything it's a combination and that's, you know, I'm not sure mining towns are necessarily, a lot of them do have a lot of activity. You might not necessarily feel it when you walk in. Um, Vulture City does. A lot of people have had different experiences, but what people don't realize is Vulture Town, you know, Vulture City and other ghost towns do, but there are also a lot of other places just because uh, ghost towns in particular have a lot of history doesn't mean like you can live in a house. And I've done readings for a lot of people who live in houses that are new houses, like maybe five to 10 years old. Um, you can have spirits associated with the land. So you can have houses that are just as haunted as a ghost town might be because yes. you have portal activity. And I can actually get visuals of portals in somebody's houses. Yeah. And there are people that are walking portals themselves because of that energy. They bring that wherever they go and they might not get literal attachments, but our spirit guides are attracted to us from past lives. So places we travel, we might meet up with people from past lives. And then, you know, then we've got spirit guides. So there's so much to it. But I don't personally, I don't believe that ghost towns necessarily have more than most other places. You could have neighborhoods that have a lot of history and a lot of activity. Um, so it's, you know, like Vulture City, yeah, it might be one of the most active. I, it's hard to say. I haven't seen all of the, there's ghost towns all over the world. 
and I haven't visited most of them, but um, it's not always about the history, yes and no, but you could have homes that are just as haunted. So I've picked up a number of things and homes that are newer homes because the history associated with the land makes it, you know, gives it that energy and, and you can have good energy and you can have bad energy. Um, I've interviewed clients and, and talked to clients and I've said, no, you've got portals in your home, but it's a good portal. You have a couple of ghosts watching over you, but they're like spirit guides. Or I'll tell them, no, you've got something that is a little bit more nefarious that you might want to have staged out. So usually I can pick up on those energies. So oh, definitely. I, I had that experience growing up. My parents' house oh. was new. However, it was haunted because of the history of the land. Yep and the natives who live there and oh, wow. who they were murdered in their sleep one night and the um chief or you know the leader or whatever you know i don't know i don't want to be disrespectful but he was pissed and he was haunting the house oh wow and wreaking havoc and um i was dreaming about it i had a dream and i saw like basically everything and then i went to a psychic and she confirmed everything i saw cleared it and he came back light. He was no longer dark. He was no longer an earthbound spirit. He came in as sparkles, said thank you, and left. And he hasn't been back. But yeah, so I have experience. There's a lot of portals on, on that on my parents' land, and a lot of a lot of energy. I don't know if that was ceremonial land, and they were there doing ceremonies when they got murdered. I and they just didn't get to close the portals, or if they're just natural portals there. I'm not sure, but. It might um, be something, um, there might be actual, if they were murdered there, their bones are probably still there, which is probably part of it. So They I are. Think, the bones okay. are, if they had built the house over a little bit more, they would have dug them up. Oh, uh, wow. But because of where the house is, it's right, the room that I, like, slept in was very, like, that was the most active room. Their bones were, like, maybe two feet over from that room. So. Oh, my gosh. Well, it's yeah. good you were able to clear that because usually it's not that easy. So, yeah, that's it. That's good. Yeah, I. it was good that it got cleared because he was angry for he was really uh, pissed, which I don't blame him. No, I don't either. I mean, and to live that long on the other side like that, you know, some people pass away immediately and they become a spirit immediately. Some people stay earthbound for days, weeks, months, years. And I can usually pick up on that um, when, if somebody asks me about a particular person that, <clears throat> that they're encountering. But that's that's interesting, though. I mean, they, that the fact that he came back to thank you, too, is. Yeah, that's kind I of was cool to hear that transition. It was it was so cool. It was the coolest thing. And. Um, yeah, I mean. It was it was it was good validation because my family would always like accuse me of just being like I don't know. They didn't they never believed me. <laughs> yeah, just and that's what's kind of sad with a lot of children because they're more susceptible and they might be picking up on things and the parents are like oh it's just your imagination so yeah. Yeah. So in the book, Lorelai says that she inherited this psychic uh, medium gift from her mother. Do you feel the same way? Um, did you inherit it from a family member or? Oh, no, <clears throat> I don't think so. My mom was actually pretty intelligent. She might have had it, not realized it. I never saw any signs of it. Where the places we lived, we didn't. I don't remember encountering any ghosts or spirits or feeling anything. But at the time, I wasn't open to it. <clears throat> and I don't necessarily think she was either. For me, it was more, I might have had it my entire life, but it didn't open up until I started getting in touch with my past lives and my spirit guides and the writing. So I think it was a combination of all of those that brought the abilities out. Um, but yeah, for a lot of mediums, they have it as soon as they're born and they start seeing things at a really young age. Um, let's see. So the fact that Lorelai in the book has a ghost friend as a child, so you never experienced that? You didn't have a ghost friend? No, not that I remember. I probably had some imaginary friends, but I don't, or maybe they were, and I just didn't know at the time. But um, I don't remember seeing anybody that clearly. I think I had some imaginary friends and stuffed animals and stuff like that that I played with. But no, I don't remember anything like that. 
Um, so how long, so I know you said you kind of like came into the gifts as you were writing. Yeah. How long did it take you to like really embrace like your gifts? Um, probably a few years. Um, I kept, I had some friends and I would visit some mediums um, and, you know, pay as a client and they would give me indications that I had these guides around and stuff. And I thought it was pretty interesting the more I researched it. I'm like, that's kind of cool. Just the concept of past lives that you can have a family from hundreds or thousands of years ago, step forward in this life to help you. That's pretty fascinating. Um, so then I started studying more about reincarnation and that's kind of how it worked its way into the series. And it's the concept of past lives and reincarnation is pretty much in all of my books. Um, just because it's just, People don't realize they think, oh, I've only had one or two past lives. I'm like, no, we have, we can have hundreds. Some people might have a lot less than others, but most of us have probably about a hundred on average. And some people really, they th they're like, oh, that makes sense because I have dreams of this past life, or I have a dream of this native person. I'm like, well, yeah, that's because you were their brother, their sister, their wife, their husband. And so usually I can pick up on a relationship when I do a past life reading and let them know, and I'll describe the spirit guide that's with them. And um, sometimes I'll, I'll tell them, I'll be guided to tell them, you might want to call upon this particular spirit guide and ask them to step forward for this purpose. Um, so it's, it's really interesting. We have so many past lives that we don't even realize and, and we just can't remember. And so that's when a lot of people that do the regressions that can actually help people remember those past lives. So do you have a, maybe a haunting experience that like really sticks with you that kind of shaped your life um, path? Um, not really. It's more what shaped it was when I started getting in touch with my guides and people were telling me about the spirit guides around me. And I had a friend who I don't, I'm not in touch with her now, but she was able to see some of the spirit guides and describe some of them. And and I didn't used to be able to pick up on the names. Now I know I have names for all of them and I know where they're from. Um, it's just, it's been more through the creativity, um, a combination of things. I actually started out with a pendulum and that helped me with my guides as well. Somebody had recommended that to me. And so you just set the intent with the pendulum and say, okay, well, ask for yes or no answers. If it's, you know, if it's no, ask the pendulum to swing horizontal. If yes, like in a circle. And that's how I started talking to them. And I uh, kind of developed from there. And then at some point I didn't even need to use it. I think it only took me about three or four months. And then I was able to start hearing them talk directly to me. Wow. And what I tell people too is meditating, even if it's just for 10 minutes a day, that can make a huge difference. One of those powerful meditations I had, um, I, don't, I don't know if I would call it a ghostly experience, but I have otherworldly beings around me. And a lot of us do have those as spirit, but very powerful and one, it was like an alien being that I think like a gray, because when I was meditating, it was for like two hours and I didn't realize how long it was. And, and so this thing kind of came into me and I could literally feel my arms getting longer and thinner. My head felt like it was getting a little bit bigger. My legs felt bit like they were lengthening. I literally felt like a gray alien. And that's because it was actually channeling me and helping. And some people think of channeling as a bad thing, but it can actually be a good thing too. So um, I was taking its energy in and they're like, yeah, I wanted you to know it was there and that, that it's watching over you and as a spirit guide. So we have living alien beings that can actually watch over us. These aren't deceased beings. These are live alien beings that are watching over us. But a lot of times it's in a good way. Like we hear about abductions and that's a whole nother thing. Um, this is not like that. It's a very positive experience. So that's interesting. Most people were taught like through movies and everything, and even in the spiritual community, even in the UFO community to fear grays. So through channeling this, how, what did you think it wanted to tell you? I think it just wanted to, like, it didn't want me to be afraid of it. Maybe I think that might've been a point when they really started coming in because I do have some that are deceased um, and I don't know how long ago, but some are living. And I've seen some kind of standing by my bed and I've talked to other people I've done readings for. And I'm like, you have similar otherworldly beings as well. Um, but I think that's one of the reasons they step forward and they want me to let my clients know because they are not all to be feared. There are so many different alien races out there, not just grays. 
not just Arcturians, which we all hear about, there are so many we don't know about that are actually helping us. And I mean, we could get into a whole nother discussion on the UFO concept, which it's not even called UFOs, it's, it's UAPs now. UAPs? <laughs> uh, unidentified, yes, unidentified aerial phenomenon now. It's not huh? even UFOs. Yeah, I know. So about that terminology. So yeah, the whole alien, they could be a whole different... Yeah, but abductions, a lot of abductions are pretty negative experiences. Um, I've, I've never had the experience, but I think my guides have said, well, you might have, except for the fact that the aliens you have watching over you are protecting you from that. So I go, wow, that's good to know. But so many, of, so many of us have that, and we don't realize that. And a lot of people love to hear that. They're like, oh, my gosh, that's so fascinating to hear. And it's not always grays either. I can, they'll show themselves. Some look more like blobs. There's so many different, some are more human-like too. Some are just like humans and they're, they're considered otherworldly beings. So usually I can pick up on describe what I'm seeing and people love it though. And I'm like, just know these are protectors. They're not abductors. <laughs> they're not here to scare you. They're just, you know, they're trying to connect with you to help you build your power. And I think that's a really great message because, you know, Hollywood, especially, they put that fear out there. And I know that yeah. as a child, I wasn't really afraid of ghosts or the dark or anything, but I was terrified of aliens. I was so afraid of aliens, like terrified. And it's taken a long time to be like, okay, aliens are just like humans. It doesn't matter. They're not all good and they're not all bad. Like we can't just clump like all greys are bad and all Arterians are good. It's just yeah. like humans. And I think that's why when I do readings for clients, more and more of them are starting to step forward because they're wanting to know a lot of them are actually trying to help us. And there are, there have been more and more sightings, or maybe it seemed like it because we because of the technology. You can go in there and take a picture with your phone, whereas you know, 30, 50 years ago, you couldn't do that. So it seems like there are more sightings, but my guides are saying there actually is. Um, but most of the ones that we see in the skies now, some some are cloaked, so to speak. Some, you know, you've got so many different you know, forms of uh, spaceships and you've got the underwater, the ones that can go underwater and have seen, <laughs> they're seen coming out of the water and the oceans. So there's still so much mystery. And then I think the military too can actually, we all know the reverse engineering stuff out there from aliens. And then you know, I could go on and on because Dolce, New Mexico has some interesting stuff going on inside their mesas um, where the reservation is out there. <laughs> so there's actually supposedly aliens or humans that are working together and doing experience, experiments and stuff. And it just, it's fascinating, but I think overall they want us to know a lot of them are here to protect us, um, to kind of watch over us. And we have, a lot of us have our own aliens or otherworldly beings as guardians. So there's not, there is, I shouldn't say there isn't anything to be afraid of, but I've talked to my spirit guides before. I'm like, are we in, are we in for some kind of alien invasion? And they said, yes, but it's not a horrible experience that humans think it is now. They're like, it's actually going to be more of a positive experience. And I think, to be honest, it's already starting. <laughs> so because all of the signings we're all seeing that many people are seeing. Every time we watch TV, you've probably seen a lot of the like uh, paranormal related shows that talk about the different sightings and they show the different kinds of UFOs that people see. Some are cloaked, some look more like elementals that just floating there. So it's pretty fascinating. I think there's an invasion that started, but it's not going to be a negative one. I think there might be here to help us. I mean, we think how bad the global warming situation is, for God's sake. And every day, it seems to be getting worse. I mean, and it's just um, more hurricanes, more floods. It's just things are more serious, more tidal waves, more people being killed. So I kind of wonder if they're kind of here to help with that, too. So... So have you spent any time on reservations with shamans and, you know, um, cause you said, I know you really do your research. So how is that part of your research? Yeah, I actually have, um, I go to a lot of native American events, um, at the herd museum and, and other, like the four corners I've traveled to do signings and I've, I've had a number of native American people buy books because I've in Flagstaff, I did a signing at a bookstore there. Um, so I know I know I've met medicine men. I've talked to medicine men. Um, there was the I think the latest one. I've talked to some who are actually native, and then there's some that are more like the new age category who have studied with medicine men. Um, there was a one lady who um, her name's Stephanie who works out of Storm Wisdom here in Phoenix, and I think she said she studied with a shaman from Peru. 
Um, I actually have a lot of the spirit guides with me are, or were medicine men and women. I have both. So in essence, I've been in training with them for the past 10 years. And they are telling me, you know, when I sit down and meditate, I've actually had animals come to me for help or to let me know they're, they're my spirit guides. I've had tigers walk through my wall. I've had, um, I had a mako shark come to me when I was meditating in my dining room and I saw, I could see it was pregnant with like two or three pups. I could see the pups in its womb and it was like lengthwise in front of me and my spirit guides are like, she wants you to help her give birth because they're going, they're not extinct, but my understanding is that there's a possibility of that happening because they're, you know, there are fishermen out there who, um, who are going after that. So uh, that was one of the reasons, I guess, to help her give birth to ensure that species continues. So that was oh. like, one of the most interesting animal experiences I've ever had is to help her give birth. That was really interesting. That is so cool. Yeah, it's like a long distance energy exchange. So you've done that as a Reiki healer yourself. So it's the same concept. We can actually help animals. And it's it's hard to believe because I'm I'm an IT person. And so I have a tendency to doubt what I'm seeing. But my guide's like, this is all energy. Send your energy towards her wherever she, you know, they let me know where she would, she was. And they're like, just send your energy towards her and the pops. And then I could see it happening. So it was really interesting. That is such an honor. That is amazing. Yeah. It, and it's hard to believe when it's happening, but my guys like, don't doubt because that's going to inhibit your ability to help people you have to trust. And that's the hardest thing for people. Definitely. Definitely. It really is. So, um, Lori, you have a new book coming out next year. Do you want to tell us about it? Oh, yeah. So it's my first children's book. Um, I'm really excited because I've written, there's like four or five that I've written. And this is the first one that is being released. And um, I mentioned to you, it's about Vulture City. So in essence, I'm trying to get people, little kids educated um, about, kind of introduce them to history, so to speak, not necessarily just ghost towns, but the possibilities of what's out there. And um, the same characters are in like four or five different books, but I'll see how this one goes. I think I mentioned it to a couple of people when I was signing at Vulture City the last time, and I've already had a couple of people say, well, where can I order it? So we'll probably get a pre-order going for it when it gets closed, so like maybe early summer, and just so we can start getting some orders in. But the characters are based on elementals. Um, so one's like a fairy. I don't want to say what kind of fairy or how she's dressed. She's really unique. So I'm kind of excited about this character. Then there's a little sky dragon. He's really puffy. Um, and there's a third character as well. That's He's like a water sprite. So they're very unique characters. They're elementals, which are associated. So they're elementals, and, and you know, but their um, characters are things that are associated with the earth. They actually can help the earth. Um, there's air sylphs that are in the sky that can help cleanse the sky from air pollution. There's water sprites that help with rivers, streams, and oceans. Um, there's fairies. There's dragons. So there's so many different things out there. Hobbits and elves have their own purpose. Um, which is to help with ley line energy. So that's pretty fascinating. And there's hundreds of different types of fairy species and elves and sprites. And it's so many, and there are a number of people who can actually really strongly connect with those too. So um, it's pretty fascinating. That's a whole subject in itself that, that can be delved into. So Absolutely. Well, that's so exciting. So will the pre-order link be on your Facebook page or on your WordPress? And probably both. Um, it'll be Written Dreams is the publisher I'm going through. Um, and Brittany is the editor and the owner of that company. So it will be on their website as well. But then yeah, I'll probably have it put on um, the WordPress site. And then I'll post it on Facebook when it comes out as well. So do you want to let people know about your what um, classes you have coming up and your your readings that you offer and things like that? Um, well, I usually I try and keep everything um, on Facebook and then that goes out to Instagram as well and Twitter. Um, so when I have a signing or um, or an event or a workshop, I always post it on Facebook and I have two Facebook pages. So if I post it on Lori Hines, it will, you know, I make sure to also um, have it go through to my paranormal mystery author page as well. So I think if you look on either one. Um, you'll be able to see the latest events. I'll schedule something for Vulture City in January, second or third weekend. 
Okay. Um, I don't have any workshops scheduled. I've been thinking about actually um, maybe doing Zoom or doing some virtual ones. I go out to Payson every now and then to do some workshops. Um, Payson? How come, what, why Payson? And then I had, yeah, I have a friend who's got a really cool um, metaphysical store up there. She has some pretty amazing stones and they're really reasonable prices too. She has some good vendors up there um, and it's called Serendipity on Maine. And Irma, uh, she's on Facebook. Irma Bramlett is the owner of that shop and it's such a cool place. She's, she's got, she's really delved into the community. She helps the community a lot up there. So she gets a lot of support. So she's a, she's a pretty cool person. She's fun. I just go up there and visit her sometimes and, and hang out. Um, I've been up there to do readings as well out of her store. That's so cool. I'm going to have to check it out. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah, you got, you would love her. Yeah, she'd like you. Oh, that's so cool. I'm going to, oh, her name's Erin? Irma, I-R-M-A. Oh, Irma, okay. And she is on Facebook. Um, I think her last name is B-R-A-M, as in Mary, L-E-T. Okay, Bramlett. Uh-huh. Yep. And or you can look up the store Serendipity on Maine. That's, a That's cool such store. a cool name too. <laughs> yeah, people love it. They love her store. She's got one little section that has she has just stones and crystals and then but she's got a lot of she's got a lot of different antiques. And that's why people love the store. So yeah. That's cool. There used to be a store here in Phoenix where I actually studied Moonaiki. It was like an antique store, but also a metaphysical store. So it sounds similar, but she went out of business. They moved. Um, it was so it was so sad. They were only open for a few years. Um, I can't remember the name of the store, but it was down on Thunderbird. And like um, it was over by the Dollar Tree on like 42nd Avenue and Thunderbird, kind of that area. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, there's some places in Glendale. I don't think I had been to that one, but there's oh. some stores in Glendale that are pretty cool too. Downtown Glendale. It wasn't quite downtown because it was on Thunderbird, but um, okay. it was over by the ASU campus. I, yeah, no, I don't think I'd heard of that one. Oh. Yeah, they were only. It was a fairly new store. It was only open for like maybe three or four years, and um, it was just such a cool space. It was it was huge, and they had a big classroom and. Oh, it was wow. so sad that the um they just with that area they kept having break-ins and the owner got sick and they just decided to close up shop oh wow that's too bad because you worked so hard and put so much money into the to a business yeah so um yeah so your readings you do you offer readings for you said it on your website i was looking it's 50 dollars for 30 minutes um yeah i've kind of been trying to you know, up the prices a little bit because it's usually 80 to 100 for a full hour, just because there's so much information that I pick up on for people. And if they pay for half an hour or an hour, I usually end up going over, especially if it's like half hour, 20 minutes. Um, it will usually end up going over just because of the amount of detail I get. So yeah, because um, I don't just pick up on one past life. I usually pick up on two or three at least, and I can give a certain amount of detail. And then being a medium, sometimes people will ask, about their loved ones who have passed on, or I might see somebody stepping forward. And so I'll, you know, I'll feel like I have to get that message. So um, I charge a little bit more just because they do go over. I don't like to time people when I'm doing readings. It's just, that's distracting for me. It's distracting for the client. It's not fair to the person sitting in front of me. So I usually figure, well, if I just charge a hundred an hour, um, I try to do mostly hour readings because that's usually what it ends up being. If oh, okay. for half an hour, it always goes over. So do you um, do your readings on Zoom? Um, I can if they prefer. Most people, I just don't do it on by phone. Okay. Um, you know, I've had some people say Zoom, but then they decide to do phone readings. So I can do it person, you know, face to face, uh, phone on the phone is just as good. All right. I still get the same visuals and messages that I would in person. And you are located in the Phoenix area, just so everyone knows. <laughs> yeah, kind of like um, I-17 between Bell and Union Hills. So, yeah. Very cool. Well, it was so wonderful meeting you, Lori, at Vulture City. And I look forward to seeing you again. Like I said, I'm going to get another book. I'm going to get another uh, The Ancient Ones. And I'm probably going to pick up the second in the series as well the next time I see you in January. 
Oh, yeah, definitely. I'll have to contact them today and schedule something. But for your listeners, I appreciate very much you doing this. It was awesome talking to you out there. And it's, it's nice to meet another history buff. And I invite, invite people to come out and check my website out if you want to schedule a reading. But Vulture City is a lot of fun. We have a lot of good things going on. It's really growing. So come out and see us. Yeah, I love Vulture City. I think I'm going to get the season pass that they just started offering. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we were talking about that yesterday. Yep. Yeah, it's it's a great deal because I've already I've already been up there, I think, three, four times. So it would have paid for it by itself. Yeah, I think you've had a past life out there, too, which is why the people that feel drawn to keep coming out usually have. That's it's, it's just, And sometimes I can actually see what you were in your past life. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and it's fun for me to be able to see that. I'm like, you know, you used to live here, right? Well, I know I definitely have. I just got chills. I know I have a past life that I've lived in in the you know southwest before so oh. it probably really it could be vulture city because like i'm very drawn to it and at first i said oh i wouldn't want to live out there but now i'm kind of like it'd be kind of cool to live out in wickenburg it's yeah that's a cool town yeah, it's I've a, thinking, yeah i've been thinking about that you have too i'm like yeah. I'm, I'm feeling drawn to it i'm feeling and my husband was like why because at first i didn't think i was and now like as i keep going back i'm like I think I could live here. <laughs> yeah, it's a quiet, especially if you work from home, it's a quiet town. Um, it's different, but yeah, it's, um, it's like, for me, it's about an hour and a half to get out there. But they were telling yeah. me you were like a, a minor there. Interesting. Yeah, they, they said you're a woman minor, which I, I didn't even know they let women mind, but I guess so. Some women are that strong. So that's, and I've only heard that from about one other lady that I met out there. A so, woman minor. That yeah. is okay. I can see. I mean, that's badass. That's pretty cool. Yes, I'm just, that's what I was just yeah thinking. I'm like, that is, I only met one other woman who had that. I don't think it was a guy. I think it was a woman. So that's pretty cool. That's so cool. Well, I mean, maybe that explains my love of uh, crystals and gemstones. And I'm like, I think prospecting is so cool. <laughs> so. I think you've had native past lives too. So I think that's where some of the, your fascination with that. I think you were a healer in past lives. <clears throat> so um, a lot of us were. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like you said, we have hundreds and hundreds of past lives. And it's, I know that I was definitely drawn out here, uh, you know, and a lot of uh, healers are. I think this area needs a lot of healing. I mean, the whole yeah. earth and the whole world does, but yeah. um, there's something about the land, working with the land out here. It's just very, um, I don't know. It seems like it maybe kind of like radiates out. Like somehow it doesn't get stuck here, I don't think. I feel like it, I don't know. Does that make yeah. sense? No, yeah, it's. And things change energetically, as you know, people change, people's energy change and, that, and then our energy and with the whole COVID thing, that's, oh my gosh, that's turned everything topsy-turvy, it seems like. And there's just been a major energy shift from that. And it's just, people seem to be treating each other worse. And it's, you know, that's why I kind of like to hold up in my house because I feel like it's a lot safer here than it is out there. It's terrifying. It is. Um just it doesn't matter like I went to Walmart the other night and a woman who with a baby and her husband like rammed a cart in me I'm like why why are people just so oh. I'm like okay I it's not even that busy like I was moving out of the way you didn't have to be so aggressive or just oh. how you know people are just it seems like I don't know they lack consideration or I don't know what it is, I but they just want to let their anger out on other people, but that's pretty bad. It's just, yeah, it, that's really sad. And on the road, you see it, people trying to run you off the road. And I've had that a number of times and oh, especially yeah. coming back from Vulture City and people cut you off within inches. And it's just, it's like, why are you such a jerk? Why do you have to be like that? Yeah. The aggression is unbelievable. And, um, you know, it's affecting everyone. Like, like I work with the public on the daily and it's, it's bad. It's, I don't know. People f have forgotten how to treat people. I don't, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> like, I think they're so unhappy with like, cause with a lot of people are not working still from the whole COVID thing, but a lot of them are choosing not to. Yeah. So it's just, I don't know because 
they think their life is up. They're trying to make other people. I don't, it's just, and that's hard. I know a lot of us, everyone goes through their own private hell. Everybody's going through their own stuff, everyone. But um, you don't necessarily have to take it out on other people. But I think all that negative energy is just kind of floating. And it's just, I don't know. It's just hard to dissipate that kind of negative energy. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. I mean, actually, Phoenix isn't even the worst. Like, I thought it was bad here, but I went to Oregon and um, Seattle, Washington, and it's worse up there. Like, the aggression and the anger. And uh, I mean, we were walking down the street in Portland, minding our business, and this guy literally stops the car and just starts yelling at my husband and I. Like, he was ready to come beat up. Like, we're just walking. I'm like, we don't live here. We don't know you. I don't know what you found offensive. <laughs> so wow. I was like, this is, you know, it is, it's like really scary times. And, um, you know, I've been last year during the lockdowns and things, I was trying to hold um, group meditations on Instagram and I haven't done that this year or, and I'm so hopefully maybe in 2022, because I know meditation really does work especially when you get a group of people doing it and if you can connect people from around the world you know even if it's even you know like you said five ten minutes like it really makes a difference and um i think we could all <laughs> use some meditation <laughs> like a number of people have tried this on facebook and it's actually this is the one good thing i like about facebook is just get on there and ask you know everybody spread the word ask your friends to send out positive energy healing energy healing prayers for those who need it i do that during meditation sometimes for my friends and to the world to say whether it's for people who are ill or just suicidal or depressed or who need money just to send out good wishes and positive vibes that those things come their way. And it's amazing how that helps. There's been studies about that. Yes. I've watched, I watched documentaries where people have been healed from, from deadly diseases because of the, the well wishes they got. So Absolutely. Amazing. So that's I, a great idea. Um, I studied psychology in college and I read this book. It was like, do prayer works work does prayer work. And it was all about like the scientific studies that they did and prayer really does work. And just in my own life, I remember being in kindergarten and a classmate of mine had cancer. She had leukemia and I would pray. We would, I would pray for her and our church would. And um, I ran into her, I think I was in like second or third grade at the time. And she came up to me and said, thank you for your prayers. She was in remission. She was, oh, she's wow. like, I feel like your prayers really helped. So, you know, I grew up praying. Um, so I know prayer works. And now as an adult, I know Reiki works and, you know, oh. meditation. And it's like, for me, I don't need the, sci the scientific, but I know that there's a lot of people who are scientific minded who oh. do need the science and they need to see the statistics and they need to see, oh, wow, like this isn't just random or this isn't just the placebo effect. It really oh. does work. Yeah, it's pretty fascinating. Even just through Facebook, just start spreading a word and just not even an official meditation. You could just you know, ask your spirits and guardian angels and spirit guides to, to help those who need it. And it's amazing how many times that works. And that's just, that would be great. Like you said, for the positive energy uh, to send more positive energy, it just, it's really frightening out there. It really is. I think that's a really great idea, Lori. I think, you know, we should just put that out there. You know, everyone, after you watch this video, just send your well wishes and positive energy out into your communities. You know, if you know someone's struggling, especially focus on them because it is, it's a very scary time and um, it is it is scary to leave your house. <laughs> <laughs> and not just because I get the COVID thing, we've got the Omicron version and, and stuff, but it's, you know, I, we still need to take precautions, but um, Vulture City is good because it's outdoors and as long as, you know, you can stay away from people most of the time out there. It's not, it's not like you're in a crowd. So that's one good thing about, that's why a lot of people like going out there now. It's, I, it's, I do, because, you know, I used to like to go to Jerome because it used to be, it wasn't crowded, but now it's like we went on, it was the day after Thanksgiving and it was packed it was like an oh, hour wait to so wait it was two or three hour wait to get into haunted hamburger all the restaurants had like an hour wait um it was crowded it was packed and i'm like oh man i just want to be in vulture city there's like nobody there <laughs> it's 
away from the atmosphere too. It takes away from having fun when you have to deal with that kind of stuff. It does because I really wanted to interview store owners and I wanted to interview oh, okay. people and I wanted to do kind of something like this, but like out around. And I was so bummed because I couldn't, I couldn't really talk to anybody because, you know, when it's that busy, they're trying, you know, you're interrupting their sales. You're interrupting their, they're busy. They're working. Yeah. That's kind of sad. I've never seen it that busy, but I think too, uh, things are starting to get busier in a lot of places because people have been holed up for so long. So now everybody's traveling, everybody's getting out there and it seems like it's making some places worse. So Yeah. And flying is terrifying. I just read an article about how like violence on airplanes is increasing and like, it's like people just be nice, just be kind. <laughs> like we're all, yeah, I think I heard the same thing on the news or something too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I wouldn't want to be a flight attendant right now. Like just people being aggressive and like overly aggressive. Yeah. And that's everywhere. And we see, like you said, you're working in the public, so you kind of deal with some of that too. So, yeah. Okay. All right, Lori. Well, I don't want to uh, keep you any longer. Um, thank you so much for your time. And um, this has been a lot of fun. Well, thank you very much. And hopefully, I'll see you soon. Definitely. Bye, Lori. Okay, bye. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you like this video, please hit the like button down below and please subscribe. I will be uploading videos every Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Arizona time. Bye guys.